recording. There we go. Right. Okay. So we're on the final lesson of um, our 10 week course where we've been looking at birds. Um, so we're carrying on and finishing off the bird pictures because I know that um, you're all still working on them, which is brilliant. So we'll carry on doing that today. I've still got to work on my um, blue tit and um, J painting. So I'll be doing that today. Um, but uh, I will talk a little bit more about um, composition today. I have created a composition sheet which talks about how composition works. Um, and I've put it on the website so you can download it as a PDF and have a closer look at it yourselves later. Um, but I'll show you it now and I'll show you a few examples of um, paintings as well that use these different um, composition techniques that we've been talking about and we've talked about previously in other classes too. Um, so we'll go over to um, the studio wall. Um, I may also what I might might also do today is actually draw out some compositions um, as examples uh, while we're working today too, so that you can get um, even more of an idea of how to use it and all that sort of thing. All right, so we'll go over to the wall. All right, so you know this very well now. Um, it's the old um, painting where I originally started off. So we've got the J and the bluebird in there. And on this particular painting, I use the rule of thirds, which means you divide the uh, canvas or the area you're working on into thirds or nine equal parts. And where the um, lines cross over is where you put the interesting things in the picture. You can also put interesting things on the lines that show the thirds which go across and down over here. So it's not a fail safe technique. It does help you to balance things out. You can break the rules with these sorts of things, but um, it's a really great way to get started on creating a composition. All right. Uh, now, there are other techniques. Uh, one's called the rule of thirds um, and one is called the golden section and the golden spiral. OK, so we're going to have a quick look at those on this worksheet that I've made. Um, for you. So I've got that here. This is a close up of part of it. Um, so let me just uh, lock these ones up so you don't have any funny things going on. All right. So I'll just unlock that one. Is it going to let me move it? It's not going to let me move it now. Annoying. There we go. Right. OK. So composition. Um, although in a general sense, any piece of music writing or painting or sculpture can be referred to as a composition. The a term usually refers to the arrangement of elements within a work of art. So the things that go into the artwork are the elements. Um, an artist arranges different elements or parts of an artwork to bring them together into relationship that is pleasing to the eye. So this is all about making your work pleasing to the eye. So um, We've talked about the rule of thirds in this course. Here is an example of the rule of thirds. So this is a painting by Vincent van Gogh, who you will have heard of because he's the famous um, guy that created all the beautiful paintings with lots of movement in them. Um, but you can clearly see how the rule of thirds um, is working in this picture. Um, so on the bottom left hand corner there, we've got the, the red boat in the foreground. And you can see where the lines cross over, but all the boats actually kind of line up to the to the line, vertical line on the left hand side there. Um, and then if we go across, um, we're heading towards um, the water and so forth. So the two the two points on the left hand side, uh, these are called eyes um, where the blue squares are. So you put interesting points on where the eyes are. The, the one on the right hand side, you can see that the, the boats in the background kind of line up to that as well. So there is a good example of using the rule of thirds. Uh, we've got another one over here. So I'll read this little bit out. The rule of thirds used frequently by photographers and you'll see it on cameras and things. You can even see it on your camera phone. Um, states that if you divide the position into um, the composition into thirds vertically and horizontal, then place key elements of your image either along these lines or 
at the junction of them so they're the eyes that I mentioned the little crossing over points uh, you'll achieve a more pleasing arrangement so this is a famous um, painting which you may have seen before by um, it's called the great wave of Kanagawa uh, by Hokusai and you can see uh, on the right hand side how the rule of thirds might uh, sort of work with this so we've got the big wave the point where the wave is just arching over at the top left hand 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 side has the crossing over or intersections of the rule of thirds and then th the other wave just below it also has that um, and then if we go over I think that must be the mountain a mountain in the background where the points cross over on the bottom right hand side so we've got a clear sort of balance in the photograph or in the painting with the rule of thirds as well so the golden ratio is a little bit more complicated uh, or mathematical anyway um, so it's um, divided by a mathematical formula which is 1 into 1.618 um, so this um, formula is commonly found in nature and it's included in things such as spirals of plants and, and so forth. So if we look down here, we can see this spiral um, working in these natural objects. So in plants that spiral around, uh, in a shell as well, uh, in the Milky Way or in this spiral galaxy at the top and in um, nature where the spiral of uh, clouds is going around in this kind of stormy looking um, photograph from above. So it's everywhere this is. Um, you can even measure this on your own face, but we can use this uh, technique to help also balance our photographs as well. Um, so there's something called the golden section as well, which is used when we divide the space using this ratio and we can also line things up to that as we did the rule of thirds so and then once you've got um, diagram one over there if you go over the diagram two you can see how these lines um, have this line has been joined to these different points in the ratio um, right into the center so you start with a main rectangle, which is drawn to the ratio. If you draw a line inside the rectangle to form a perfect square, so that'll be on the right hand side there, the remaining rectangle below it, um, you will have the same ratio as the main rectangle. Uh, you can keep doing this over and over and over again, uh, forever and ever, uh, and you get this infinite kind of spiral. All right, so um, all sounds quite complicated, but um, once you start using it, it's a lot of fun. I'm going to show you a bird painting example of this in a minute, but you'll know this painting. So this is the uh, famous Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. Um, I found this one on the Internet, but you can see how um, the golden ratio has been used on a section of this picture. And we've got the spiral going through the first rectangle through the perfect square and onto the second rectangle and then on into where her nose is so it goes around the top of her head and then down past the shoulder and up to a hand so this is why uh, one of the reasons why this painting um, works well but there's lots of other reasons why um, people always wonder about her expression and um, what she's feeling and her emotions and so forth this is the golden section just over here, um, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes with another paint, painting that we can look at. And here we have a picture by George Surratt using the golden section again. Um, so he's used the, the square and the rectangle to help work out this picture. So right across the bottom um, of a horizontal line, you can see the jetty matches perfectly. And then on the right hand side, you see the sail matches perfectly with those sections as well. So um, this all helps to balance the picture. And then another really famous artist, we've got um, J. M. W. Turner and the Fighting Temeraire. 
Um, so here, you, and this is a really interesting painting because it shows how um, things were changing at the time from the old sailing ships uh, into steam because we've got a steam um, boat pulling in the old um, temeraire to be broken up at the end of its surface. Um, but again, you can see how the lines cross over the important details of the picture and the bottom horizontal line sort of uh, crosses over with the horizon and that little sun going down at the top. I think it's a circle going down at the bottom there or a sun or a light even. And then the light in the sky um, has the top vertical and uh, sorry, the right hand vertical and the top horizontal on it as well. So um, all of these um, techniques have been used by artists over many centuries um, and they're still used today because they're really they're, they just work really really nicely. So if you want to learn a bit more about that there's loads on the internet I've also done other videos using these techniques but the um, the worksheet is there for you to use and download to get more information and have a bit more of a think about it. All right. So now I know I'm talking for a while, but I've got another couple of pictures down here to show you as well. Um, so the first one is um, a bird picture and the second one's a bird picture as well, but a different one. So let me just bring those two up. There we go. So the one over on, let's just get rid of um, the composition one. Let's get rid of that. All right, there we go. So this one over here is, um, sorry, the one on the right hand side, uh, we've got all these lovely birds sort of flying around. Now, um, I thought this was, I recognize this as having certain elements of the rule of thirds on it. So I'm just gonna put the rule of thirds on the top. OK, so you can now see where the rule of thirds are. Now, the top bird, the red one on the right on the left hand side, he doesn't quite line up to the rule of thirds. But I think that's quite an important fact, actually, because the bird is flying into the scene. His head is on the vertical on the left hand side. Um, so that helps it. But if you go down to the bottom uh, where the other red uh, headed bird is, um, you can see that both the bottom horizontal line and the vertical line cross over. So that crossing over point, the intersection, um, has the head of the bird on it. And uh, down on the other side, you can see that little bird poking out of the, the, the wood. He's on or she's on that vertical line as well but just below the horizontal one and at the top we've got that um, other bird leaning out to get the berry off its I'm assuming its parent um, but you can see there how all of those uh, lines have been used to help make the picture balanced all right so one more and then we'll go over and look at what I'm doing today um, so uh, let's find that one so the next one is using the golden ratio um so we've got this lovely tail feather arcing around the picture and then coming up and curling round into the center where those birds are so i'm going to put on um the golden spiral first of all so there it is so do you remember the spiral we looked at on the worksheet you can see how it starts at the very bottom right hand side comes all the way up around the wing of the bird and then down into the center where the bird's beak is and the other birds are um, just in the background a little bit. OK, so it works and it balances. I saw this one tonight and I saw it match straight away. Now, um, if I put the golden section on top of that, um, let me see if I can do that. Uh, I don't know if I've got it. Where is it? No, nope, I haven't got that one at the moment, which is really annoying. It didn't go on. So anyway, the, the golden section will come down past the head of the main bird, straight down vertically, and the horizontal line will come just underneath 
where the curve is of the spiral. So um, the golden section works with this as well. I just uh, haven't put on the third picture. I'll drag it on in a bit and we'll come back and have a look in a few minutes. All right. So um, there's a little bit more information on on um, composition. We'll go back over to the desk now and have a look. So uh, uh, this book. So I got this book um, from school. This is one of my books that I left at school and then I saw it and I thought, wow, what a lovely book because it's got all these wonderful birds in it and compositions. So the pictures we looked at tonight were all from here. Here's the one that we just looked at and it's by R. Havel. Um, and it's the red headed woodpeckers that we were looking at there. And um, I don't know if I can find the other one. Um, the arching I did mark it out actually. I marked out quite a few because I was looking. There we go. So this one was by William Hart as well. So, uh, but there's loads of examples you can find where that has been used. So tonight um, I shall continue working on this. So if you remember those rule, those rule, the rule of thirds was used on this one. Uh, so I've got the last little area to finish off down there. OK, so um, if you are a bit stuck on your compositions or you want me to have a look at yours and give you a bit of help, then certainly I can do that um, this evening. I'll put on that last picture in a few minutes and then we can have a look at that one together as well. OK, right. Any questions, please? My lovely art students. You can un... Really? I just looking at my picture and thinking, where was my, my thirds? I don't know. Oh, right. OK. <laughs> Interesting to draw on it, really. Make a bridge and put on it, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I what I've done, I'll show you. Um, actually, while we're here, I will show you um, some of my drawings that I've done for Lino. Um, the oh. yeah, um, so these all use the um, I've been using the golden ratio to do a lot of these pictures. Um, so the lines are through here. And um, there's another one somewhere over here, somewhere like that. Let me just find a better one. Yeah, so there's this dolphin picture. has got one going through there. Another one going through here where the eye is. And the other ones are across here, I think. Great picture. Yeah, so in order to so I knew I wanted a dolphin kind of leaping out of the waves here. So I, I drew the dolphin in, but I knew the kind of area that I wanted that dolphin to fit into. So while I'm creating the composition, I'm also thinking about the size of things. And then the bottom uh, here intersection is where I've got this. Um, these two lines crossing over here, I've got this boat. So again i'm using those intersections on these lines to work out exactly where things should be i've got quite a few more here um, there's the boat one that i did as well so it goes through there through there so we've got the front of the boat on that one and this little board this little float just here as well um, and over on this one, we've got the wing of the bird, the wing of the bird, the back of the, the mouse, and then the tail of the owl as well. And on the badger, so there's two lines going down. These are ones that I'm hoping to turn into um, repeat prints. So where the two lines intersect here is the head of this sparrow. And then where the lines intersect, I've got this badger going across that intersect, that um, horiz horizontal um, line. And then the front of the badger and the back of the badger going through there as well. So kind of line that up and I've got some berries 
on this side as well. And then with this. Wow, well, there's some great pictures, Jim. Yeah, I really enjoyed doing these actually. They were a lot of fun. Um, so here, look, we've got vertical lines, horizontal lines. The bottom of the squirrel is on the crossing over points here. Um, the fox, the front of the fox is there and the back of the fox is there like that. So I've used those three points to achieve that one. Um, and then there's this train one, which I edited quite a lot. OK, so I thought I wanted to show you those as well. Now, what I might do tonight is draw out a new one. Um, if I've got time when I finish doing my blue tit. I'll show you that. Well, this one was a bit <laughs> unusual. I wasn't quite sure what I was doing with this one, but um, I wanted I was thinking I'll put a Vespa in one of those bikes. So we've got the Vespa on this line. We've got the rest of it going across that line. And then for some reason, I think I, I think I was just doodling, really. But I was thinking about a helter skelter, things you'd find on the beach. So we've got I think the... that's a bit. Um... So, yeah it is isn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the sun look is on that line as well so um it balances it works as composition but i don't think the subject matter fits the scene that i put it in in the end because we've got a beach there and i, don't, I, I haven't seen a health skelter on a beach <laughs> so uh, sorry Close well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I might get away with that, I suppose. Like the friend there. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was the uh, hair. And we've got this one here as well, which is the, the badger one. So we've got lines going down there. And loads. These are, this is what I've done all of this year. Uh, and then a seagull and a seal. Yeah. I love that one, Jamie. So there's the... That's the lino print. Of it. That's lovely. Yeah, I like them. Yeah. They're all I remember. Not sure about the best of them. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not sure. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't I cut. Think it's a bit of character. Yeah, that was. I um. That. I love that one. Just showing us. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And then then we've got this. Uh, badger. Badger. So I love him. I love his wiggly bits around him. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Hair in the That's night. That's amazing. Thank you. Is it in Look focus? That. Yeah. There's movement in that one a lot. Lots yeah. of light. Yeah. So Lots it's a hare in the in the night time running down to the beach. Lovely. They're all lovely. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So I shall finish off this one. We've been doing this for a couple of weeks now. And then maybe I'll draw out some other ideas. Because I've found these lovely pictures of um, ducks here. So I might do a simple composition using the duck. Um, or a couple of ducks. Um, a... Can I ask you a question? Hmm. All right. So um, the whole of the idea of this uh, exercise was to use the rule of thirds um, to create a composition. So there were many interesting aspects about this. Um, of course, um, well, some of the most important bits were using the rule of thirds to help balance the composition, placing interesting areas onto those lines. So we did that um, in previous weeks and we've talked about it again um, today, but in a little bit more detail. Um, in future classes, we'll be looking again at these things because uh, people seem to find it very interesting and it's certainly very helpful. Um, to help create these paintings that we all wish to do. Um, so in this lesson, anyway, I finish off the uh, blue tit um, down the bottom there. Um, and I'm using the photograph you can see uh, on the screen here to help me um, paint it. Uh, so I drew it previously, um, obviously, and um, painted the rest of the picture. And I left the blue tit till last. So a lot of the time I'm creating layers of paint on here and mixing those colours as I progress through the picture. Um, starting off with very basic colours and adding in more as we go along.
So again, the nice thing about acrylics is that you can keep layering those colors on top of each other. This is a nice deep blue that I mixed. I've also added a touch of brown into this blue to make it nice and dark as well. But overall, this was a lot of fun to paint. I love painting birds um, and we enjoyed chatting about them during this lesson today. Um, one of the things I one of the things I raved about was the fact that I saw loads of uh, long tailed tits in the garden today, which I haven't seen before with the lovely pink um, chests and the, and the stripe on their forehead to make them make them look really punky and things. Um, but anyway, um, the painting. So I'm just building up um, layers of uh, colour. So I've observed the colour on there and then I've started to darken down and add the tones back over the top and then bring those other colours back in again later. And you'll see me hop back over onto this wing as we progress through um, the painting uh, this evening. And it, I, found, I found it quite relaxing to paint this as well. Um, because you've literally got those colours in front of you. One of the things I was trying to do was um, just try to simplify things a little bit. Um, but as usual, I get carried away with the details uh, and the colours and the tones and things in here. So um, just the same as with the J, I've um, started out with this idea of keeping things uh, or simplifying the image, but um, added in a little bit more detail than I planned to originally, which is absolutely fine really enjoy doing that. So now I've mixed um, the ultramarine with the burnt umber to create this lovely dark um, tone that we can put back into the wings and so forth and darken the tones down to strengthen things up a bit. Make it give it a bit more impact so it matches the rest of the design. I started off with this really bold um, golden yellow sort of colour and then started just patching in some browns just to start seeing to see where the tone is to give the body a little bit more of a round shape have a bit more of a three dimensional effect in there um, and then I started to mix in some uh, touches of green into the uh, yellow on the on there so you can see the layering of the paint um, as we go through um, making this picture here. It's a great exercise. Nice way to just enjoy the paint and um, create that little piece of artwork. Um, so the blue tits face at the moment uh, is just the paper. But um, in a little while, what I um, end up doing there is um, adding on some thick layers of opaque uh, titanium white and then bringing in a few tones with a bit of blue and green. Um, just give the face a little bit more shape as well. You'll see me do that shortly too. There we go. There goes in the tone. So I didn't overdo it there, just kept it quite simple, but you can see the shape underneath the eyes and around the shape of the head a little bit more now. There's a nice sense of movement in those wings through the brush strokes as well. And then just wanted to highlight those legs a little bit by adding some lighter green around, the, around those feet claws. There we go. So that's virtually the composition finished. But um, what I do is just add a few more sort of uh, little bits into the background. To accentuate the background, just add slight more detail, not too much because we don't want to overdo it. Um, but there we are, all done. Thank you very much. If you've enjoyed these classes, please follow and I'll see you next time. Bye.